For Session Update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. On a cool spring morning, a ribbon cutting ceremony was held on the roof of the Minnesota Senate building to mark the completion of the first solar array on the state capitol complex. With the statement, may these solar panels serve as an example for all of Minnesota going forward, <laughs> Senator David Sengem ceremoniously cut the ribbon. Today marks uh, uh, another landmark in the history of the capitol complex and Minnesota's decade-long uh, move towards more being more energy independent. As you, uh, many of you know, the Next Generation Energy Act aimed to lower greenhouse gas emissions and provide incentives for renewable energy statewide. And under uh, the governor's leadership, state government itself has championed efforts to lower energy and increase the use of Minnesota's uh, renewable energy sources in state government operations. In particular, uh, the governor's executive order 1217 sets a goal for a 30% reduction per square foot in state buildings in energy use uh, by 2027 and a 30% reduction in greenhouse gases from state government uh, operations by 2025. So today we are very excited to unveil the very first rooftop solar installation here on the Minnesota State Capitol Complex. Uh, state agencies, of course, have installed renewable resources elsewhere in state government, uh, but this marks the first uh, such uh, installation here on the Capitol Complex, and it will make cost-effective reductions in our peak energy use, particularly on hot summer days. It also, and I think more importantly, or as importantly, demonstrates leadership by example, as the Senator said in cutting the ribbon. Um, by providing the opportunity for tens of thousands of Minnesotans who visit the state capitol complex annually uh, to bear witness uh, when we install this and other uh, installations across the capitol complex to bear witness and learn about how Minnesota's renewable energy efforts save money, create jobs, and strengthen our economic resilience. So the Senate building today, uh, with all, as with all new construction, was designed um, the whole building, of course, to be uh, uh, minimal use of energy consumption. But today, uh, it also becomes the first building on the Capitol Complex, not only to have been built in accordance with the B3 sustainability guidelines, but also to generate its own uh, solar power. Um, a few quick details. Uh, the project uh, may seem large. It covers 8,634 uh, square feet. It includes 414 solar panels and will fuel approximately 12% of this building's uh, energy needs annually. This is only phase one of the project. Uh, later this year, we'll be working on phase two of the project where we'll add more panels to the roof of the mechanical shed that's behind me. Um, when complete, the two arrays together uh, will produce 230 megawatts per year or about 17% of the building's energy needs. Uh, the traditional styles of energy, traditional methods of energy are going to change as we go forward and uh, solar, wind uh, and other forms of energy, hydro perhaps, uh, are going to be the, the new brand. And uh, so it's exciting to have these panels on the roof of the Senate office building and uh, hopefully in time we'll see more of these around here. And uh, again, I think it demonstrates for all of Minnesota what the future of energy really is. Uh, let's embrace it and let's move forward with it. And I really do want to extend my gratitude to the many, many people who worked on this project from planning and designing and building and now managing uh, this, this new system, which I think is really exciting. Um, you know, when I think about this building, the Minnesota Senate building, it is associated with sunlight in so many ways. You know, those of us who get to work in this building get to uh, treasure the way the sun beams in through those beautiful windows into the space. We get to see the light reflected off our beautiful Capitol Dome. Um, uh, I am so touched by the photographs of the wonderful Senate photographers, David Oakes and A.J. Olmstead, who capture that beauty so well, because I think I encourage everybody to look for those photos because it is pretty special. And hopefully there's some sunlight on our work in this building as well in a more metaphorical sense. Uh, so it's fitting that we're here on a sunny spring morning uh, to commemorate that we are using sunlight to help power this building in which we do the work of the Minnesota people. Uh, it's, it's exciting that it was identified early on that we could make this uh, uh, 
a solar building and make it solar ready from the outset. And it's worth noting that this is the first state building uh, in St. Paul uh, to host renewable energy. As Senator Senjum said, this is the way of the future uh, and renewables is something that the legislature has worked hard to push for and to provide incentives for and motivation for from a policy perspective. And so it's fitting that we are here as part of the state government and the legislature to set this example for the rest of Minnesota as we move forward into this important part of our future. Afterwards, I spoke with Senator Senjum about his experience with the Minnesota-Germany Energy Policy Exchanges and his perspective on renewable energy. Well, I've had the opportunity to travel to Germany on a few occasions and, uh, and learn about what they call their energy transition, uh, wherein they're frankly moving away from nuclear power and going to renewable energy, whether it's wind power, whether it's solar power. Uh, they're a committed country, uh, and Germany is uh, economically viable as, as they are are willing to risk their future on renewable energy. And so I think it sets an example for the entire world, frankly, in Minnesota as well. Energy is changing. It will change regardless of what you might think about the current methods of energy. Energy is going to transition. It's going to, we're going to be a clean energy economy in, in 20 or 30 years. And so projects like this, I think, uh, kind of lead the way in terms of suggesting to people that this is the future. And, uh, you know, we, we dare not stand in front of the, in front of the past or, let me just change that. We dare not stand in front of what the future is because it's, uh, it's not a good place to stand. Go to any grade school in this state, go to any high school, college, university, uh, uh, those, those individuals are going to tell you what the energy future of our country is. And, and it is not coal. Uh, it is not, uh, unless we can clean that up, and it's very difficult to do, very expensive to do. Uh, and people want clean energy. They want clean energy uh, uniformly across the state of Minnesota, across the country. And so, again, once again, this is an example of, a small example, albeit, but a small example of, of what the future really is. And as chair of the Capital Investments Committee, are you committed then to more projects in the future that are going to capture clean energy? Well, this was not a capital investment project, right. but, uh, you know, uh, on a personal basis, yes, I, I'm an advocate of clean energy. We have to do it sensibly. We have to do it reasonably. We need to do it methodically in terms of just scheduling. But uh, this world is transitioning. We're not going to, we're not going to be in, into the nuclear power business, in my opinion, in, in 15 years. We're certainly coal and natural gas is, uh, is uh, not the future of our energy, in my view. Uh, there's limited supplies of that. So we need to look at a new, new generation, new technology, whatever it might be, wind, solar. We need to just look that direction and, uh, and, and seek our future.